I, I'm excited. I'm excited about the Word of God. Now, last week we, we talked about recalibrating, recalibrating. And I was, I was wearing, how many appreciated my jacket last week? My, you know? <laughs> and, you know, sometimes, you know, Blair there, he's, when he's in Aurelia, he's texting me. And if I don't have my iPad on Do Not Disturb, his messages are coming in. And so I'm trying to preach, and I'm like, hey, Pastor, you're rocking that jacket. <laughs> so I say to him, you know I can see your message. So listen, if you're online, do not be texting me while I'm preaching, all right? Pastor Carol will be like, bring home milk and stuff like that. And <laughs> I'm like, woman, I'm busy. I'm, 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 I'm working here. <laughs> but last week, we, we talked about making sure that we are building on firm foundations. When we're recalibrating, I believe that September is a, a great time to reassess and, and do some inventory. Now, I had a message planned, but I, I really sensed that I had to pivot this weekend. And, and this week, I really want to talk to you about the proverbial plate. I know this is more, uh, more of a platter, but really for size purposes, if, if you could just pretend with me, use your sanctified imagination that, that this is a, a plate and, and everybody has one. Everybody has one. Everybody talks about their proverbial plate. And normally people tell you that they have too much on their plate. You know, when you, when you talk to them, they say, oh, pastor, pastor, I, I have so much on my plate. I've, I've rarely met an individual. As a matter of fact, I was really trying to rack my brain and to be accurate. Uh, I've, if I have ever heard somebody say to me, pastor, I don't have enough on my plate. Could you, could you add something to my plate so my life will become full? For sure, my staff does not say that to me. They, they never come in on a Monday and say, oh, please, pastor, can you, can you add things to our plate? As a matter of fact, they, they remind me, do you know how much, how much we have on our, on our plate? And for illustration purposes, I, I kind of raided the cupboards of the food hub uh, Pastor Jason, I promise I'll give it back. And he's probably like, that's my food. That's my food. And, and, and so I just want to just lay some things here on, on the proverbial plate. As we mentioned, that a lot of people have probably more than enough and maybe more than they can handle on, on their plate. And I, 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 know where, I know where your mind is already going. Your mind is already at, well, you know what? Pastor's going to talk to us today about making sure that we remove things from our plate. But I'm actually not going to do that. It's not, a, it's not a message of removing things from your plate, although perhaps there are some things that need to be removed and we'll leave that between you and the Holy Spirit. But the reality is this. The reality is that in many circumstances, you're not able to remove things from your plate. You might be in a season of life where it's impossible to remove certain things from your plate. And, and the fact that we live in a society that loves to live an overwhelmed, high adrenaline lifestyle, we're just not in that sort of society that talks about removing things from our plate. And unfortunately, when we become overwhelmed, we know that in our world, people, you know, they self-medicate. They self-medicate with alcohol and, and with drugs and with other things because they, they, they need to manage what is on this plate. Now, the Lord understanding that our plate can be full, that our plate can be uh, overwhelming at times, the Lord has actually designed a life for you. Listen to me, church. A life for you that is not in balance, but rather in rhythm. Let me say that again. The Lord has designed a life for you that is not in balance, but is, is in rhythm. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I really believe that it is impossible. If you are trying to chase a life that is in balance, I think you're going to frustrate yourself. I think you're going to fail. I, I think that you're going to find more dead ends and roadblocks because I don't believe that a balanced life is actually biblical. I don't believe that Jesus lived a balanced life. As a matter of fact, there were times where people thought he was out of balance and even his own family tried to bring him back home. And, and there was a time where he was just fixated on Jerusalem and the people became offended because they felt he was out of balance. But listen, he was ne not necessarily in balance, but he was always in rhythm. He was always in rhythm. The truth is that 
there is a rhythm to your personal life. And then there is the grace of God that adds rhythm to your life. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unpack this. I just wanna give you illustrations so that you'll help me understand so that I can lay a foundation. Let me, let me give you an example of what I mean by a life that is in rhythm. How many have been on the highway? How many know that when traffic is moving well, whether it's at the speed limit or not, there is a rhythm and there is a flow to the traffic? Yes? How many know that slow people are just as bad as fast people? Hmm? How many know people that are doing 60 kilometers an hour in the left lane? Come on, somebody help me preach, right? Okay, if you're from Brampton, you know what I'm talking about, right? And so it's not about, it's not a message about, hey, you need to slow down or even a message about you need to speed up today. It is a message of are you in rhythm of the grace of the Holy Spirit that is in your life? Hmm? Are you in rhythm? So, you know, I was driving up to, I was driving up to Aurelia and, uh, and, and by the way of Aurelia, went to Beaverton and there's a place, there's a place on the 404 now about New Market Aurora where they've actually increased the speed limit. Everybody say praise God. So it goes from 100 kilometers to 110, okay? I think it's a test, they're doing a test, whatever. Here's what's interesting, because you see, people see that sign 110, and for a moment, your brain has to click in because it's not used to seeing it. Do you know what actually happens there? People begin to slow down. They're like, is it a trick? What's happening here? And the flow of the traffic for a moment is broken, but in my mind, I'm like, 110, that means I can go 130. <laughs> Don't judge me. I know you all do it. You know, come on. You know that you're okay. I know this is online, you know, forgive us police, but we know that at 120, they're not going to give you problems. So you're like, how, you know, 120. My mind is like, I'm at 130. Why? Because there is a, there is a flow. There, there is a rhythm. There is a tempo to the traffic. And as long as everybody is flowing correctly, it's great. It's when people decide, oh, I'm going to do 150, 160, or people decide they're going to do 60 or 80, that all of a sudden, and that cycle of rhythm is broken and accidents can happen. See, today it's, it's, it's too easy for me to, to speak to this amount of people and say, oh, you know what, you, you need to slow down. You, you, need to, you need to take things off your plate. But, but the fact of the matter is, maybe you cannot. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you are wired and geared and graced a certain way that not only can you handle a lot on your plate, maybe you need more. For example, I'm an individual. I actually thrive on more, not less. I find that sometimes the less I do, the more tired I get. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever say, oh, I'm just going to take a day and I'm going to do nothing and I'm going to sleep in and, 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 and then you wake up and you're exhausted. If you live with a young person, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it, I'm like, what, did you come out of the womb tired? Like, was that tiring for you? Like what? You got pushed out. I mean, come on. Tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Of what? Of doing nothing. Doing nothing is exhausting. And so there are certain people that are actually wired to do things. They are graced by God. And so my friends today, I don't want you to be judged by people that are always telling you you're doing too much. There's too much on your plate. No, no, no. Here's, here's the question. I, I would rather you take an analysis of what is on your plate and making sure that what's on there, number one, is the will of God. Number two, that it adds value to your life. And number three, that you have the grace of God to accomplish it. How many know that the Apostle Paul did a lot of things? As a matter of fact, he said, I've done more than all of the apostles. He, he wasn't bragging. He was telling you the truth. Why? Because God had given him a grace. And as I began to think about this, you know, I was speaking to an individual. I'll tell you a little bit about him in a, in a bit. I was speaking to an individual in the lobby and, and, and uh, you know, they, they were telling me they'd never heard the message preached this way. And, and I really hope to change your mindset today about the message and the, the passage I'm about to share with you. I want you to look at it in a different way because I, I began to realize that when Jesus encountered people, he never said to people, hey, let me take that off your plate. Hey, hey, let, let, let me remove that from you. Oh, you're, you're, you're taking too much on 
Let me make sure that I reduce the load. No, you know what Jesus would say? He would say things like this. My grace is sufficient for you. Stop comparing yourself. Stop trying to compete with others. Stop trying to be somebody else and what God didn't make you and begin to operate your life according to the grace that God has placed upon you. Because here's the truth. We know, don't we? We know when our lives are are overloaded, when we are stressed, when we feel like we're out of control, we know that somehow we're either moving too fast or too slow. Because like I said at the beginning, some of us need to speed up. Some of us, listen, listen, you may have a lot on your plate, but maybe they're not all the right things. Maybe it's not the amount. Maybe it's the individual things that are on there that God maybe wants to make an adjustment of what's on your plate so that rather than the things depleting you, they actually replenish you. Everybody say the word replenish. When we talk about the grace of God, that's really what we're talking about is being replenished. When, when, when we say things like we're resting in God, what do we say? We are being replenished so that we have the grace to manage what is on our plate, whether we put it there ourselves or or whether circumstances have happened. I want you to understand, my friends, today that no matter which one it is, God has a grace for you. People that are going through hardships, I say to people, there's a grace for this. Can I say it this way? There isn't a thing in your life or a thing that could happen to you that God does not have a grace for that God has not thought about. So I want you to turn in your Bible. We doing okay? I want us to turn our Bibles to a couple of places, if we could stand. Matthew 6.33, out of the New King James Version, says this, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. How many understand that Jesus wants to give you things. He just said that. He said, I want to give you things. But here's the order. Seek first. And then things will be given to you. He said, don't seek things, seek God. He said, therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Sufficient for the days, its own trouble, or another translation says the evil of its own day. And then Matthew 11, here again, words of Jesus. I want to read from the New Living Translation and then the message paraphrase. Jesus said, come to me. Everybody say, come to me. Because that's the prescription. All of you who are weary and you carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Church, catch that. Rest is given rest you don't earn it it's it's part of grace it is it is given to you pastor how's it given to me by coming to Jesus that's what he said if you come to me I'll give you rest you're weary I'll give you rest you carry heavy burdens I'll give you rest if life isn't fair I'll give you rest he says take my yoke upon you and let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your soul. In other words, the Lord's not going to berate you. He's not going to criticize you and put you down and and, and say all kinds of mean and nasty things. He says, for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give to you is light. Did you hear that? He says, my burden is easy. My, the burden that I, the, the burden that I put on you is like, you say, well, pastor, sometimes I spiritually, I just feel so heavy, heavy laden and worn down. Yeah, that's not Jesus. That's religion. Yeah. Jesus said, religion does that to you. The, the burden that I put on you is light. And then in the message translation, or I should say paraphrase, he says this, burnt out on religion, come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. A real rest. There is, I'll, I'm going to talk about this in a moment, that there is a rest that is different. He says, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. You ever notice when you're reading the Bible, Jesus is never hurried. He's never frust, flustered. He's never frustrated. He's, 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 he's never losing it. He's not coming apart at the seams. He, 
He's just always in total control. Why? Living life according to the grace. He says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. There it is. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely in light. How many people can live freely in light? Come on. How many can use some freely in light this morning? Let's be honest. Well, Jesus is saying, that's the life I have for you. That, that's what I desire, the life of John 10.10, 10, that I've come to give them life and life more abundantly. Let's pray, Father. We love you. We thank you. We thank you for your word, your, your principles, your ways, your understanding. Thank you that you know us. Thank you that you know the grace that is on our lives. And we pray that grace would be multiplied to everyone here, everyone online. Grace be multiplied to you. In the mighty and awesome name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. Come on, turn to someone before you're seated and tell them freely in light. Come on, tell them freely in light. Freely in light. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want, I, want to share some, I want to share some principles to you because I really want to speak to you about increasing certain things in your life. Because the reality is this, you are most likely not going to unload your plate. It's a, let, let's just be honest, I'm not even going to waste my time. And uh, as I mentioned to you, we don't live in that kind of a society. So if, if I cannot or will not unload my plate, hopefully what's on my plate is good, it's quality, it's the will of God. But then if I'm not going to unload the plate, that means I need to increase something. But before we increase, I want you to see three principles that we need to live by. Number one is the principle of priority. And Jesus said, base your priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and then all these things that, that you need, that you desire, that you want, they're going to be added unto you. God, God is going to add this to you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, uh, AV team. You guys are awesome. I, I messed up the whole PowerPoint and, and they're, they're working with me. So if something goes funny on the, on the screen, it's, it's pastor's fault. But um, what I just said to you about rest, they're not getting any rest right now because pastor laid some burden on them. Praise God. But, but priority, priority is, is, where, is my, where is my focus? What, what, is, you know, what is the most important thing? And here's what Jesus is saying. Your life ought to be a priority of seeking God and his righteousness first, that you're seeking the kingdom, which means the principles and the lifestyle and how we ought to live, that if you put that first, everything else will fall in order in your life. But then the opposite is true. That when you don't put God first, then, then what's going to happen? You're going to have unrest. You're going to have chaos. You're going to have crisis. Now, let, let, let me help you a little bit because I, I really believe that, that even what Pastor Moses was saying today, you know, we live our lives in compartments. That when we're in church, then we must be spiritual. And then when I go to work on a Monday, I'm not. No, no, no. My friends, he, here's what the kingdom of God is all about. That we understand that wherever we are, we're serving God. That when I am, when I am in the workplace, I can put God first. That I'm there to glorify God. That I'm there to do His will. That I'm, that I'm there to make a difference. Whether I go to the supermarket, uh, wh whether, you know, whether I am, uh, I'm at the gym, whatever it is that I'm doing, I I'm living my life in such a way that brings glory to God. And I'm serving God all the time. That means, my friend, you're washing your car, you're serving God, you're worshiping God because you're doing it unto the Lord and not to yourself. You see, that's a little bit of a different lifestyle of, oh, on Sunday, I'm spiritual. Every other day, I can act like the devil. No. Everybody say no. So the first principle is priority. Because priority will now tell me what's on my plate, what's my focus, where am I going to put my, my energy, my time. Because wherever, whatever you consider to be a priority, all those things are going to follow you. Does that make sense? Number two is this concept of rest. Not the idea that, well, uh, I'm tired, I'm going to take a nap, I've rested. No, no, no. It is a, it is a spiritual rest. The Bible talks about it in the book of Hebrews, how, how God desired to bring the children of Israel into an inherited promised land that they would have rest from their enemies and from wandering around. So, so not only am I operating by priority, but I'm operating by rest. My circumstances may not change. My troubles may not change. My adversity may not change. But in everything I do, 
I have rest. I rest in God. You know how important this is? Uh, The writer Hebrews tells us labor, listen to this, labor to get into the rest. Huh? Work to get into the rest. And when you're in that place of rest in God, it doesn't matter what's happening around you. You are operating always from a place of rest. That no matter what's happening, and we could could put faith in there, the idea that when I have faith, when I trust in God, I'm just resting. Issues are happening. Problems are happening. People are losing their minds, but they're at rest. Let me, give, let me give you another understanding, and i got to be careful because if I take off here, we'll have problems because pretty soon now you're going to begin to hear the next wave of fear that they want to put on you because you know the next wave is coming and you need the next shot, and if you don't get the next shot, then you're going to die. And so what do they do? They bring you out of rest into unrest so that you will be fearful so that they can control you. But here's what God says. Don't be controlled. Be at rest. Amen. Be at rest. So I have priority, I have rest, and then I have something called time or seasons. The principle of seasons that that there are seasons in my life where certain things will be on the plate and certain things will be off the plate. This is why I'm saying I don't believe that you can live a balanced life. Listen, if you have young children, how many understand you don't have a balanced life? They're going like, yeah, tell us, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. Right? You don't sleep right. If they, God forbid, they get sick. One gets sick. The family gets sick. If, if you have young children, you're not living a balanced life. If you're in a, in a brand new job, if you're starting a business, if, if you're in a brand new relationship and, and all of a sudden, oh my God, you're so in love and, and the, the sun and the moon, they shine over you and all the, you're, you're not balanced. Yes, you're not balanced, but you can still be in rhythm. You can still be in rhythm, but seasons dictate my plate. There are going to be seasons when there's more on the plate. There's going to be seasons when there's less on the plate. But my friends, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether it's more or less. What really matters is, is the grace of God upon your life for you to deal with what's there. Is it quality things that are on your plate Or are you just making some poor decisions? And I'm going to talk about that. So number one, priority. Number two, rest. And number three, time. So if you're not going to reduce the play, then we're going to have to increase some things. The very first thing that you must increase, because this is critical, is you need to increase the grace of God that's on your life. You say, Pastor, how do I I increase the grace? How does that even make sense? Well, every time that Peter and Paul address people, you know what they would say? Something like this. May grace and peace be multiplied. See, things are added. Grace is multiplied. Mercy is multiplied. Well, if I only need grace for salvation then why do, I, why do I need to multiply it in my life? Why don't I just get one dose and I'm done? I get saved and I say, no, no, no. Because grace is more than salvation. Grace is an empowerment. It is a gift of God that, that gives you the strength, the, know, the wisdom, the knowledge. Everything that I'm, I'm going to talk about today flows from this grace because the more grace that you have, the more rest you will be in, but the more you'll be able to accomplish. You ever look at some people and say, how, 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 do you, how do you get all that done? How, how does that happen? It's the grace of God on my life. Can I say it this way? Grace makes things easy. When things are hard, then I must be going against the grain. I, I must be going against the flow of God's favor. Against, I must be fighting and frustrating the grace of God. I believe that grace is like a river. My, fl- my friends, flow with the river of God. Flow with the direction. I say to people, they say to me, well, pastor, what's the will of God in my life? I say, where is the grace and the favor flowing? Follow the river. Come on, somebody. Don't paddle against God. Don't, don't, fight a, don't fight against God's grace. Flow with him. And, and here's what I would say. I go, I go back to that highway illustration. We should only move at the speed of grace. We should only move at the speed of grace. And, and, and when you begin to feel the, the vehicle of your life getting out of control and you getting overwhelmed or even underwhelmed, then you have to ask yourself, have I violated the speed limit? Have I violated God's speed limit or begin to pray and say, God, give me more grace. 
multiply more grace in my life so I could get more things accomplished. Now, see, immediately, a lot of times, when people, rather than getting more grace, they begin to look at the plate and they want to remove things from the plate. And here's what I found about God's people. The very thing, they, the, ver, the first thing that they want to remove is the things that belong to God. Oh, you know, Pastor, I... So much on my plate right now. I, I, I can't serve. I, I, I can't be in a ministry. I, I can't do that because there's so much on my plate. How many understand that it's not the amount of things that are on your plate. It's the fact that the grace of God is, is not multiplying in your life so that you can handle more. So that you can do what God has asked you to do and accomplish it well and not violate God's principles, but do it to the grace of God. That's when our lives are refreshed. That's when our lives are joyful. That's when our lives are satisfying. That's when we just love serving God, love worshiping God, and it's easy. And you know what I've found? Those are some of the happiest people on the face of the earth. Love to serve. You know... The, the old saying, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. I want to change it. You want something done, give it to somebody who has grace on their lives, where, where grace is multiplying all the time. You know, I, I, I thought about this. I took it from the, you know, we took this food from the food hub. Imagine in, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of COVID, churches closing down. They, you know, they, they, they didn't know if they could stay open, not stay open. At one time, we were running a service with five people, including myself, five people. And, and in the midst of it, somebody said, you know what? Uh, people need food. We, we, we need to do, a, you know, we need to do a, a food hub. Can, can you imagine if we just said, no, no, no. The last thing we need is another thing on our plate. And then nothing gets done. But rather we said to God, will you give us grace? Will you give us favor? Will you give us the right people? Will you give us the network? Will you, will you give us the food? Will you, will you help us do what you want to do? And, and how many know that when God's in it, it's going to happen? When God's in it, it's going to happen. Turn to your neighbor and say, grace be multiplied to you. Prophesy it. I love it. You know, the Bible, the Bible says that, that when Paul was in prison, and he had all the problems and issues happening in his life and he was praying and, and Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up in the prison. Here's what Jesus didn't say. Paul, this is a, this is a terrible place. I'm going to get you out of here. You know, Paul, I'm really sorry that, that you're here because I know you're here because of me and you know, I really feel bad for you and, and gee, I just really want to apologize. No, Jesus didn't say any of that stuff. You know what he said to Paul? He said, Paul, be of good courage. My grace is sufficient for you. You know what that really means? You know what Jesus is saying? He's saying, my grace is enough for you. My grace is all you need. My friends, whatever you're going through today, as bad as it looks, as nasty as it looks, things that are not your fault, things that just happened, my friends, here's the word of the Lord to you. My grace is sufficient for you. Amen. Tap into the grace. Amen. Tap into the grace. You can murmur, you can complain, you can feel like I'm in a prison. Oh, my friends, listen, rather than complaining, just say, God, just increase your grace on my life so I can endure this. So not only do we need to increase grace, but, and I won't spend too much time on this, but we need to increase favor. Everybody say favor. Favor, favor is God's kindness that comes upon you when you don't even deserve it. Favor is people opening doors for you and doing things for you. And, and have, you ever had, have you ever had anybody say to you, I don't know why I'm doing this, but, but you know, and don't tell anybody else what I'm gonna do. That's God's favor. Yes. God's favor that makes things easier for you and, and allows you to go through opportunities. I believe that when we sing about breakthroughs, what we're really saying is God, God, do me a favor. God, be kind to me. Give, give, give me an, an opening that I'm finding here in your presence. The, the Bible says that favor increases on our lives. Joseph had favor. Daniel had favor. In places where they never should have had favor, God says, I see you there. I know you're there because of my will, but I'm not going to leave you there naked. I'm going to give you favor and people are going to be kind to you yes. and that favor my friends took him all the way took Joseph all the way to being second in command and he, the same favor that was in the prison was the same favor that was on the throne you think it's a different favor I'm telling you it's the same That's right. Jesus had favor Luke 2 52 
Stop murmuring. Stop complaining. Ask God for favor. And, and my friends, listen, when it comes to favor, you know, here's, here's something you need to understand because part of your, your grace increasing so that you can manage the load is people. Who are the people around you? Who are the people that are partnering with you? Paul said, you know, to the Philippians, you partnered with me. We, we, we need networks. We need people. I, I'm able to do, you know, school starting for me this week. I am able to do and teach the upcoming generation of leaders in the kingdom because God has favored me with incredible people that are here that while I am gone, operations are still going on. Things are happening because I have faithful, trustworthy people. And I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about, oh, what's happening in the church? What's Pastor Mo doing? What's Pastor Jay doing? What's Candid? No, no, because my, my heart is at rest because God has given me a network that has caused grace to increase on my life so that I can operate at a faster pace. You can't do it without people. But I remember, I remember the day it was all me, just me. And the pastor's wife, and then the pastor's wife left, and it was just me, and I was, I was in the back there. I was in the back right near my office, and all of a sudden, I mean, the, you know, the offices, the church was so quiet on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. And all of a sudden, I just stopped because I began to hear people. I heard voices, and I wasn't going mad. I, I heard people and, and bustling and rustling, and, and, and I heard it. I heard it in the spirit. I, I, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, what, what, what is that? He says, that's your people. Those are the people that I, I'm going to connect to you. They're, these are the people. The, the, the staff is going to grow. The church is going to grow. And there are days I come out of my office, I just say, people, be quiet. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> all you people do is talk, man. But, you know, because you go from extremes, right? The Lord says, remember the days of the quietness? You know what I mean? But, but it's, a, it's a good, it's a good, yes. it's, they're loud, but in a good way. All right. So everybody say, we need what? We need people. We need favor. My friends, my friends, we need prayer. In the presence of God, we, we need prayer. That's what Jesus said. Come to me. Come to me. Be with me. Walk with me. Pray. I, I don't know. I, listen, for me, I, I cannot take a walk. It is the honest to God truth. I cannot take a walk without talking to God. I don't know what it is, whether it's on the beach. I walk around the neighborhood. I, I, you know, I did it yesterday. Sometimes I'm like, I, I say to Pastor Carol, I'm just going to go for a walk. I'm going to go for a walk and, you know, I just bring my headphones and, and, you know, maybe I'll listen to some music, whatever. And then all of a sudden, I just get this like, eh, almost God saying, aren't you going to talk to me? Aren't you going to talk to me? I, I'm like, okay, Lord, put the, put that. And I just begin to talk to God. I don't know if my neighbors are like, hey, there's that crazy guy that talks to himself. <laughs> he walks around with a stick. <laughs> this guy walks around with a stick and he just talks to himself and he's, he's mumbling and he's from another country because he's talking a language that, that you know, we, we don't know. But listen, in Brampton, they, they just think you're from another country. Speak in tongues, hallelujah. Talk to God. <laughs> I go to, I, you know, the gas is a little bit better now. You know, you're at the, you know, you, you can either murmur and complain or you can just go like, and just glorify God. <laughs> glorify God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, can I, can I just, listen, I, I got to be careful. I'm going to get Spears over here, but all of you, because I've noticed these Tesla showing up in the parking lot and I bless you and uh, watch what's going to happen. Watch what's going to happen. Mark my words. Mark my words that the moment the population shifts to electrical cars, gas is going to be dirt cheap and then come talk to me about your electrical bill. Come on, come talk to me. <laughs> come talk to me. I'll be driving the eight cylinder, praise Jesus. And... Uh, I said, I, I, I'm sanctified, but not all of me. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Faith. Everybody say faith. faith. 
Remember, we're increasing. We're increasing because we have to carry the load. And I, I want to remind you of the day that Jesus was in the boat, Pastor Alicia, with the disciples. And you remember the storm came. Those were that uh, with me, and you know, you were with me in Israel. We were on that, you know, boat, a, a similar sized boat. Maybe their boat would have been a little bit smaller. And and all of a sudden, there's a storm coming, and waves are happening, and the wind is blowing, and they're going to drown. And they look at Jesus, the captain, the leader, and he's asleep. He's asleep. And they wake him up. I'm sure they're like, and they say to him, do you not care? Do you not care that we're going to perish? That doesn't it, God, are you not concerned? You know, do you not see what's going on? And, and the Bible says he wakes up, he, he rebukes the storm, then he turns to the disciples and he says this, why were you so fearful, O ye of little faith? Why were you so fearful? Not, not why were you fearful, because there's a natural human reaction to that, but he's saying, why did you have so little faith? Notice the faith of Jesus. He must have been a great sleeper, by the way. And those of you that are great sleepers, I bless you. Honestly, come lay hands on me. Those of you that, you know what I'm telling my dad was like that. My, my dad, listen, then they could have dropped a nuclear bomb. My dad would have been, we'll take care of that in the morning. Right now? I'm, and my mother was the opposite, and she, and he would drive her crazy, and she'd almost like she'd almost want to wake him up because he was sleeping, right? Because she was awake. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But here's is, oh, is that Keisha? Is she the Keisha's the sleep? Yeah, God bless. You. Yeah, like no matter what, bless you. Come the hands on me, praise you. Anyway. <laughs> faith. Jesus said, have faith. If, if you have faith, then the rhythm of your life will increase be, because you are believing God. And, and my friends, I said, I'm not talking about que sera, sera, whatever will be. Well, I'm not talking about things like that. Or when people say, oh, you know what? You know what? Oh, it'll all work out. And they have no idea what they're talking about. But my friends, when you and I could say something like it'll all work out, we know because biblically we know that all things work together for good because we know that the designer of our life, the artist of our life, that he's working for us and in us and through us. Amen. We're increasing our faith. We're increasing our favor. We're increasing our people, our, our network. And my friends, we're increasing our wisdom. You've heard me say this, and I'm going to repeat myself, please. The reason that God is giving you wisdom is so that you will increase the quality of the decisions you make in your life. Can I tell you how many times, AV people, I love you, you're, I bless you, man. I'm telling you, you're going to get a, is that Kevis? Kevis, you got a great big kiss if that's you, praise the Lord. Right on, but right on the forehead because you're a guy. All right, um, I don't want people to say in that church, you know, no, 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 no. And <laughs> that's a whole other sermon, praise Jesus. Where was I now? <laughs> wisdom, wisdom, yeah. Wisdom and deceit. <laughs> yeah. There, there's a message on decisions right there. Wisdom, right? I watch people whose lives are already stressed out, whose, whose plate is full, quality, non-quality, and then they go and make a decision to add something to the plate where you want to say to people, what were you thinking? Why would you make a decision like that in your life at this time, only adding to the stress without increasing the grace? And then they unravel. And my friends, if you unravel bad enough, it'll affect you physiologically. This is where mental health issues come from. This is where ulcers come from. That, that, that things many times that are happening in our mind, and I even touched on this, that are happening in our soul and in our heart, they manifest in our bodies because we are becoming overloaded because sometimes we're just not using wisdom. Jesus said, I'm going to increase the quality of your decisions if you'll ask me. My friends, you know why God, some, sometimes he says no to us? Because he recognizes this isn't good wisdom for you. Yeah. 
This isn't good timing for you. Remember I talked to you about timing and I, I forgot to give this illustration. Corey, if, if you can come up, my brother. I forgot to give this illustration. I remember we had, uh, you know, I was an executive at Shoppers and uh, we had uh, Annie and Emily. They were really small. We had just bought a house in Concord. Beautiful house. We had the ministry. I, at some point, I even think I was, uh, here I was an, an executive, assistant pastor. I'm doing all this stuff. And then all of a sudden I had this sense, I should, I should take night school courses. I, I should get ministry courses. I, I should take Bible courses because I, I really believe this is part of my destiny. And I was right. But I was in the wrong season. Go to work. Right, Jeeve, you know what it's like, 10 hours a day. Back in the day when we used to go to work, you know, you, we used to go to work instead of work at home and travel and travel back. And, you know, you had to take care of the home. You had ministry. And, and I came from a generation, there's still a few, but I came from a generation where ministry was important. Huh? Where no matter where I was on a Wednesday night, man, you came to Bible study. And in those days, we had Wednesday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. And my wife wasn't well. And so I thought, I'll take these courses and and I, I, I just, I thought I was going to I was overwhelmed, to be honest. I was stressed out. How many know that when you're overwhelmed, your personality changes? You get sharp and angry and tense. Hmm? And then some people want to self-medicate and so they hit the bottle or they hit drugs or whatever else people are doing today to try and manage the plate. You see, what, you know what those things are, church? Listen to me. They are a replacement for the grace of God in their lives. I don't need any of those substances. When I'm overwhelmed, I start walking and talking with God and I say, God, get me back in the rhythm. I, if, I have, if I have more stuff on my plate, I just say, God, give me more grace. Huh? If I got to deal with Pastor Jason, I say, God, just give me more grace. You know what? He is like, he is so low maintenance, honestly, he is. Half the time, isn't that true? Half the time you don't even know that he's, yeah. And, uh, Andrea's wife came to church today with him and I said, yeah, she's only here to make sure that you come to where you say you are on a Sunday. I know that. <laughs> but you ask for more, you ask for what? You ask for more grace rather than hitting these these substances that are temporary and that cause bondage and slavery in your life and, and you want to ask God for wisdom. Yeah. Two things I want to say and I'm going to close. Number one, worship team, get ready. Number one, my friends, listen, listen to me, listen. Do not neglect your physio physiological being. Things like hydration, sleep, nutrition, exercise, weight loss. These, how many have found, you know, anybody, anybody lost weight recently? Anybody lost weight? Hey, I've, got a, I've got a young lady, a personal friend of mine who lost, literally lost a human being, right? How much, how much is it? 117. That's like a little human, hey? Would you say you feel better today than back then? Thousand percent. See, we we make changes, we we lose weight, we sleep better. People go, oh, I feel better. And isn't it amazing? We know we're gonna feel better, but it's just it's just making that decision, just building that momentum, changing habits, changing routine so that we get into that forward momentum. My friends, listen, I'm, I, obviously there's a spiritual message, but I want you to understand that your mindset, your body affects your spirituality. That when you feel better, you can pray, you're more focused, you have more energy, you can, you can accomplish more. Please do not ignore increasing your health. Church, can I, can I say it this way? Don't wait for your body to shut you down to tell you, hey, get things in order. And then what do we do? We, we uh, well, we go to Jesus. Oh, Jesus, heal me. And Jesus says, you get on the treadmill. <laughs> 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 
because we'd rather spend four hours in a prayer line than 30 minutes on a treadmill let's just be honest and the Lord says hey you have some responsibilities but anyway I'm gonna get off that by the way <laughs> okay so I, I put on this I put on this shirt today which I'm gonna give it away because somebody said uh, it's too big isn't it it's too big I, like I'm floating in it right and that it's too big. So I'm going to, Jonathan, this is your, I take, I give it to you now, but that would be another. Um, but somebody said to me, oh, oh, pastor, are, are you wearing a bigger shirt because you're hiding something? I'm like, I ain't hiding nothing, bro. But you should go look in the mirror. <laughs> All right. Um, last thing I want to say, last thing I want to say. Everybody say replenishment. We have, Dahlia, it's so good to have you in church, dear. I know you can hear me. I know you can hear me. You can't see me, but you can hear me. It's so good. To, I see you. I love you. I appreciate you. There are things in our lives, natural things, that we need to do that actually replenish us. See, we think if it's not spiritual, then God isn't in it. My friends, it's simply not true. That, that there are things that we do that replenish us that I believe God is in. You might love to go fishing. For me, I, I love to go golfing. Uh, you might love music or art or going to a museum, what, what, whatever it may be, ladies, and I, I'm not trying to empower you here, but you know, for so, some of the ladies, it's, I want to go get my nails done. I want to go get my hair done. And, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a replenishment. Uh, yesterday, Pastor Carol had taken Emily to a to a wedding, and I was tired. I was tired. I was honestly, I was tired. I didn't know what to do, and and I thought, you know, I'd gone for a prayer walk and texted a few people, and and, and then I came back and I thought, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And so you know what happened? I, I wound up at the Toronto Premium Outlet Mall. Should have bought a shirt. Should have bought a shirt. Got myself a latte. I just walked around, went to a few stores, checked out a few things. I didn't spend any money, but I was just refreshed. Walking around, watching people, listening, and looking at people, laughing at some people, and, and, and just I was just refreshed. And then I then I then I I took the long way home and I just I was just listen to me, listen to me. I'm driving home. And I feel God's pleasure. Ranjeev, I, it was like Jesus was there. I feel God's pleasure on the golf course. I feel God's pleasure in the mall. I, I, I feel God's pleasure because I know that the Lord wants me to be replenished. My friends, get rid of this guilt and shame and all the rest of it that, that is on your life. That, well, if I'm, you know, that if I'm in the gym, that God, that God must not be with me. Of course God's with you. This is, your, this is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My friends, we must replenish. This is why Jesus would say to the disciples, hey, hey, let's go to that wedding. And I don't even want to tell you what happened to the wine, but hey, let's go to that wedding. Or Jesus would say, you know what? I, I need to go up to the mountain. I, I need to get apart. I, I need to replenish. Let me ask you, what, what are the things in your life that you need to replenish or that you need to increase that replenish you? You know, I had a beautiful meal. Was it Friday? Friday night we were there? What day is it? Yeah, Friday night. Saturday, Friday. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, you can't get this stuff at the keg. But you know, for some people, cooking is a replenishment. They cook. If that's you, come and see me. Praise Jesus. I'm eating low carb, high protein, but I'm still eating. But, but it's therapeutic. Some people, listen, some people, they clean the house. It's therapeutic. I'll lay hands on you for that anointing too. Praise Jesus. But, but what is it for you? that you do that replenishes you that, that God says I'm with you and I want you to sense my pleasure I want you to stand this morning how many have received at least one thing today one thing
travel at the speed of grace.